one of the questions uh, that I was given was, what about ketamine in surgery? And uh, uh, Dr. Schwartzman and I wrote a paper uh, that you see at the bottom that basically says if someone has or is suspected of having CRPS, they should always use intravenous ketamine during surgery to lessen the likelihood of the spread of the disease. When I wrote the paper, my portion of the paper had 22 patients and not one of them spread the disease. In, in the 20 years or so since that, well, probably 15 years since we wrote the paper, I've only actually had one patient that spread the disease with intravenous ketamine. And that's an incredible statistic. So the next question is, well, what kind of ketamine, what kind of surgery? And the answer is everything from extracted wisdom teeth to bunion surgery, uh, any kind of surgery, but especially those surgeries that involve a nerve. Um, one of the questions that I got was, what about cataract surgery? And I've never used ketamine in cataract surgery, nor have I seen the need for it, nor have I ever seen the extension of the, the CRPS and cataract surgery. How much ketamine depends upon whether or not a person is ketamine naive, meaning are they getting ketamine treatments, in which case I give them whatever I give them during the ketamine treatment. And if not, we generally use anywhere from 75 to 125 milligrams of ketamine intravenously, intraoperatively. Please remember that ketamine was released as an operating room anesthetic so anesthesiologists are very familiar with the use of the drug. It's not novel. And I tell the, the anesthesiologist, use whatever you want. Just make sure that one of the things that you use is, is ketamine in that dosage. And fortunately, I've never had an anesthesiologist argue with me. Um, I find that it is just a, an essential part of the anesthesia in surgery knee surgery, back surgery, breast biopsies, for sure, because of the abduction of the arm. Any surgery in a patient with CRPS should have ketamine in the mixture of the anesthesia that's being given. One of the questions that I was asked is, what's my ketamine protocol? So I, I, this is my fundamental protocol. But at the bottom, I've said the most important thing is the dosing, even more important than the timing. Now, why do I say that? Because I have seen patients who have come to me from other physicians who have gotten ketamine infusions, and the mistake that's being made is they're getting the same cocktail, the same ketamine, the same adjunctive medications, day in and day out, treatment in and treatment out, and they're not the same every time. Now, if it's working, that's great. Once you find a, a, an amount of ketamine, Stick to it unless something changes. I've had a person, people where you have to decrease the dose because they lose weight. I've had people that go into flares and you have to increase the dose. I've had people with circumstances. And so the doctor who is administering the, the prescription for the ketamine should sit and talk to that patient and say, how was your day? How was your week? How was your month? How have you been since the last time I saw you? Because those issues change. The startup protocol, the last line of it says, and so on until reaching a proper time frame. I have patients who come every two weeks. I have patients who come every four months. There's no cookbook answer. It is not weight related. It is not gender related. It is not um, size related. It, 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 everybody is different. And, and you cannot determine the dose except by trial and error method. And that's why the consultation with the patient is so important when administering ketamine on an ongoing basis. One of the other questions that, that, uh, that I got, which I would have handled later, but since we're talking about ketamine, it says, is it a mistake for me or other severe CRPS patients to stop getting inpatient ketamine? Inpatient ketamine is wonderful, and inpatient ketamine get, takes the place of the startup that you see. The problem with inpatient ketamine is finding a place where you can do it. Um, when I started doing ketamine, we were able to do that. At this point in time, I cannot find a local hospital that will allow me to do it. But if you can get inpatient ketamine, it's a great starting point because you can increase the dosage from an average of 
150 to 250 milligrams a day to 900 milligrams a day. And in that particular case, more is better because you don't have to worry about the side effects if someone is going home. If you can find the intravenous ketamine hospital-based protocol, by all means, look into it and then transition to the outpatient. And if at some point in time you wind up with a flare for whatever reason that the outpatient isn't controlling, move on to the inpatient again. 